On this episode of the Twisted Ten, Adam and Eve need to take out the alien garbage. And welcome back to another episode of the... You, I just did it, didn't I? Yeah, Son of a yeah, you bitch. Did. You totally <laughs> did it. You were like, and I was like, what? <sighs> welcome to another episode of The Twisted Ten. I am Adam. I am one of your hosts. However, this week, I am not hosting. You're not? No, I'm not. Um, before I throw the over to the invitation, or over to the other hosts of the show for their introductions, um, Gwen Stefani and Bradley Knoll sang a song together. Do you guys know what it was called? Seeing Red. I Saw Red. That's right. Um, more on that red. in just a minute. All right. Sitting over on the couch. What's up, guys? It's Josh. Um, you know, thanks for joining us. And uh, over here to my left, Ron. What's up, everybody? <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. It's me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh. also not your host this evening. I forgot mm. to mention that. I'm sorry, Ron. No, that's right. Uh, that's okay. I'm Ron, and I am... Your host. Oh, yes. Going to be guiding you through quite the interesting topic. Now, just <clears throat> just to preface that a little bit, you did tell us in our Discord and the host channel that this might take a little while. We might uh, we might be here. We might this this we're in for a long haul. Well, long haul is a bad choice of words. We're in for a hell of a show out of you. I United, would say apparently. so. Knowing this bunch of chatty Cathy's when it comes to these types of topic matters, this should probably be a little longer episode. I'm guessing. <laughs> Uh, all right, so to uh, hit our spoiler, the I Saw Red comment, we would like to welcome back into the studio, officially, our sexy redhead, or our other sexy redhead, I guess, because there are two sexy redheads that were kind of part of the show, in Attack Van Sickle. Hit your plug bell for One yourself, my friend. sacred lover that I shot dead. <laughs> <laughs> there yes. you go. Nice. <laughs> Welcome back to hey, Florida. Hey, what's up? Yeah, what's up, dude? I didn't know where the hell you were going with it. I saw a red thing. <laughs> I knew the answer, but I wasn't supposed to talk until you introduced me. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? I'm back in Florida. Yeah, I'm welcome. Happy to be here. Well, no, yeah, we're glad back. to have you back. It feels like the family's all together. It feels like I a reunion. Know, it's a reunion. Are we going to take a picture later? Go, oh, can we? Actually, we already have been taking pictures. That's so. right. That's right. That is right. Soon to come for the studio, for the for those listeners that are out there, is uh, live Twitch streaming as well as live YouTube streaming for every show. We're remodeling some of the stuff in the studio down here. So I'm digging. It's got that 70s show vibe down here. We're in <laughs> yeah. the basement. A lot yeah. of weeds. Sm- I mean, a lot of vape smoke in the air. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it is a basement. Uh, so. so now that Tack is here in person, can we not make fun of his Brady podcast anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a <kidding>. second. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, happening now? That never happened. Oh, no. <laughs> you cut all that out, right, Adam? <laughs> no, all these all cut out. Yeah. Okay, good. You know, I'm editing the show, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, attack We didn't think about that when we gave him those responsibilities. You're going to be like, in his stupid break, and then it's going to kick into something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that's actually, I'm glad you said that. Um, that is the big surprise for tonight, that Tack is back, and he'll be joining us when he can. Tack is back. Mm-hmm. Back, back again. again. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to be doing all of the editing now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm cool. excited. And I'm, I've already done one episode and I'm waiting for the rest. Uh, hmm. the, well, the, the other ones, the, the, the pre COVID ones have all been edited other than the one you did for Trey. So this the one from the last week. one I get is this one? No, no. We, I saw the one from last week. We haven't done anything. Oh, with yeah. It, so. oh, that's true, true, true. Yeah. I'll send yeah, you that true. one as well. So cool, cool. You'll, cool. After tonight, you'll get two. All right. Two Sounds more. That's good. Edit. Yeah, man. So, so, yeah. What's the TLDR on, you know, the, Two years since you left Florida. Obviously, we are it's caught been two up. Two years, but year and a half. Okay. Nope, it, it was like two years. I was literally gone for it one year and seven days. Well, tag your presence it felt just like makes time years. drag. <laughs> yeah. Your your lack, <laughs> your the presence, lack of your presence. Your presence makes, makes time, time drag. drag. <laughs> your presence makes time drag. <laughs> which, which is oh. a good one? Go with the one that makes you feel better. Which of this two? Just. <laughs> So what's the question? Where have I? What have I been doing? Yeah, yeah just what's what's been going on with you? What's uh, nothing? I, w- I went up to Virginia for a year because you know I got laid off, which is good times because uh, I was literally days away from closing on a house. Thanks, Ron. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> no, that that's not a negative. <laughs> sound like I was the one who laid you off. It's Way to fault. fucking go, no, Ron. Ron. Just fuck it up, Ron. Ron was my uh, mortgage guy, and uh, <clears throat> I was literally days away from closing. And then yeah, uh, we were I get laid to off. Close. I'm just saying. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, could you have still closed his house? Actually, yes. Yeah, we wow, probably they could. Didn't, yeah. They didn't do that last minute verification of employment check? It had already been done. <laughs> yeah, Damn. I was too scared, but, though. I but honestly, like, ah, that's, you just, look, you were that's not the way you, to do business for the borrower or as a loan no, officer. No, you were, yeah. you're, we're giving you shit about it, but you made the mature, responsible right, right. decision, Absolutely. and we applaud you for that. So that's a good that's a good move. So I timed it perfectly with the end of my lease. So I was, and now that I'm unemployed, I was losing the house. And I was like, so in a week, I'm going to be homeless and unemployed. I was like, so I had a week to make a decision on what to do. My sister lived up in Virginia at the time. And uh, she's like, just come up here. I got you. And so I did. I spent the year up there. All I did was deliver Papa John's pizza for a year. And then uh, missed Florida too much. Missed you guys too much. You know? I was talking to the listeners, not you guys. Oh, oh you fucking it. knuckleheads. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I missed my life here. I miss all the stuff here and all you guys. And so I was like, I want to go back to Florida. So I came back here um, thinking I had a job. Good to go. Yeah, All Blue set. Origin. Really fucking cool, prestigious well, location, too. Well, let's not like oh, <clears throat> pump it up too much. I was working on a Blue Origin site back out of the Space Center again. <laughs> but two weeks later, I get laid off again <laughs> at that job. <laughs> Goddamn. I know. Anyway, so now I'm at, an, I'm on like job number three or four in a month. So, Ugh. and I'm. Still looking for something else, something better. <laughs> so I'm struggling right now, but I'm here and uh, and I'm in this room right now. So everything's that's good for this moment right now tonight. Everything's great. You'll land something pretty soon. I'm hoping so. I really so there's there so your background is more on production, video, videography side, that kind of stuff. So that's that's, that's kind of what your I focus. would love to be in. Yes, I would love to get in with some media department in a great company or media, something like that. Yeah. Of course, my professional background lately has been security for the past few years so you know so if anybody has anything <laughs> <laughs> now now we're not pimping tack out for a girl we're pimping tack out for a job, job the word first. for the day is job j-o-b job <laughs> so we all, get your ass out today all i can say is that as soon as we make enough money to have four people be able to quit their jobs we'll do that right now it's just the three of us that have quit our job <laughs> to do this podcast sorry yeah, yeah. So job oh. first, and then we'll pimp out for me to find a girl. So. Ah, okay. Right. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I like what it. What if you just find a girl who has a great job? Kill two <laughs> birds with one stone. So if yeah, anybody there out there. <laughs> just go find yourself a good sugar mama. Yeah, there you go. If you yeah. fit the criteria of sugar mama, contact Hack. He'll yeah. take six to 60. <laughs> I don't know six. what that means. <laughs> that's a little young. Oh, 16. Oh, that's still young. That's still too young. <laughs> Jesus, Ron. Oh. Yeah, we'll cut that out. Tax a sick bastard. What can I say? <laughs> it's true. It is true. But not like that. Mon- yeah, so- monthly rate. Monthly. Let's just call it monthly rate. <laughs> All right. So 6,000. Gonna- monthly rate for the to girl? 60,000. Oh, okay. Oh, damn. Oh. 6,000, 60,000. All right, monthly. Yeah, we'll go with that. <clears throat> I am going to tease something. So uh, we're going to do a. Hopefully an after show today um, recording. Remind me in the after show today to tell you guys a little story about tax security gig that he's got right now. And my son. Oh, <laughs> just just we'll talk about it in the after show. So for the listeners, uh, we have a Patreon set back up as well. Uh, so go check that out um, just at patreon.com slash twisted 10. Right? Yep. OK. Uh, one of the tiers to that is going to include uh, the after show. So we're going to start recording maybe every show, if not every other show, 30, 45 minutes of, a, of additional content. If you enjoy us and you enjoy the content, it has nothing to do with the top 10 list. We might have some fun anecdotes in there, but uh, but uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be raw, unedited and only for Patreon members. So if you enjoy the show, check it out. You'll get to hear about that story, too. And it's funny. Yep. <laughs> Self plug bell. <laughs> Self plug bell. Yes, I do that a lot. It's all that we have to plug right now. It's ourselves. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> all right, are we uh, are we ready to yeah. uh, to get this show do- show on the road? I road on the show. This is gonna be good. I think oh. so. Oh yeah, Brian. All right, <laughs> oh, Brian. <laughs> From this point forward, Ron, this is your show. Yeah, all right, right on us. All right, guys. So, as you probably remember. This show, we're on here on episode, even though we don't number the shows, um, we've done about what, 90, 91 episodes, something like that. So somewhere around uh, the 13th episode, uh, when I wasn't part, a normal part of the show, you guys invited me in to do an episode and I did the top 10 
possible human, human extinction. extinction events. Yes. Oh, okay, you recall that, right? Yeah, that was... I'm sorry, you just put that in yeah. Discord, right? Correct. Okay, I that's why that came up recently. I put in my top favorite 10. I mean, really, they're all, I like them all, but Ron's was made my top 10, twisted 10 lists that we've done in the past. But... Sorry, Ron. What would human extinction even mean if we <coughs> can't ever figure out by the time we're extinct how we got here to begin with? So this Ooh, top 10 yeah. list is top 10 theories about how life developed on Earth. Yes. Oh. Yeah. You just, you just so, made Adam come. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I do you the, see I why? I have the weirdest panspermia boner right now. <laughs> You know him in anthropology. Mm, oh, I know. It's, it's got to be on there. It's, it's got to be. <laughs> What's that? I have no idea what you're talking about. Anthropology wood. <laughs> Antho wood. Uh, more like wood the size of an ant, but that's okay. okay. Oh, nice. This sounds cool. I'm excited. So uh, are you guys ready? Yeah, ready hell yeah. Jump Let's into do it. it. Yeah. All right. Number 10. Oh, he number started at number 10. 10. He usually started at number one. But uh, still- I have it numbered as number one again on my <laughs> fucking list. <laughs> I fuck it up every time. Yes. So now I have to remember. One is ten. Nine is two. Eight is three. You know. Oh, good luck with that. Because oh, you're gonna say like number seven, and we're gonna lose. Track. Well, luckily I'm not drunk like you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> get him. Wait, that's an option. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, okay. Number ten. Number ten. We're or, still doing that. Number no. ten. Oh, I, I, wait, wait, I oh, want to use sorry, Trey's, I want to use Trey's voice in there. I gave it all to you. I haven't listened to one of those yet. You're like, I can't wait to hear it. I sent it to you. I, I listened to it. it. No. I listened to all of it. Sounds great. <laughs> The numbering, the tray numbering. That's oh, a separate file I sent him. Yeah. So anyway. it's okay. It's okay. Oh, sorry. But sorry, before I start this list, actually, I want to mention a few things. This list has a twist. All right. Ooh, mm. Okay. It has a teaser. Oh, nice. a, te- right? oh, a teaser, teaser for another for episode? Absolutely. Oh, for another shit. episode, one day to be recorded. <laughs> okay. This guy came to play. And it has a number that has a two-parter. Damn, ladies and, and gentlemen, a and a B. <laughs> this is how this is how you host a twisted ten. Yeah. Way to go, Ron! I didn't realize we were giving out extra credit, but you have earned it. So. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Hundred and ten. All right, here we go. Number ten, deep sea vents, proposes the primordial life forms that gave rise to all life on Earth left deep sea vents because of their invention of a tiny pump. These primitive cellular pumps would have powered life-giving chemical reactions. The idea detailed um, December 20th, although I don't know what year this was. I think it was just a couple years ago, actually, like 2018. In the journal Cell could help explain two mysteries of life's early origin. How did the earliest protocells power chemical reactions to make the organic building block of life? And how did they leave hydrothermal vents to colonize early Earth's oceans? Authors of the new theory argue the environmental conditions in porous hydrothermal vents where heated mineral laden seawater spews from cracks in the ocean's crust created a gradient in positivity <laughs> charged protons. Yeah, here we go. I'm following Spr- you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, ser- <laughs> that served as a battery, in quotes, to fuel the creation of organic molecules and protocells. Later, primitive cellular pumps gradually evolved the ability to use a different type of gradient. The difference in sodium particles inside and outside the cell as a battery to power the construction of complex molecules like proteins. Interesting. So that's that's a so we come from the water basically is <clears throat> is where that that's kind of mm-hmm. leading to. Uh, there is some chains of evolution that show that all all life evolved from an aquatic animal. So then the question would be where did the aquatic creatures begin with? So this is from what well, thermal vents from. Inside the earth that just co- created that chemical reaction well, and those molecules yeah. inside those porous tubes. That's fucking cool. Yeah, it's it, it makes sense if because I of unders- how hot it gets. Yeah, it gets crazy hot. If I understood that right, it basically created static electricity at these thermal vents. These thermal vents, by the way, still exist and it's oh, yeah, those, yeah, no, those yeah, are definitely. still kicking out uh to this day. More yeah. life? I guess. I don't know. Some of those vents have uh unbelievably toxic chemicals that, that spew out of them where like, I mean like cyanide, like things that we couldn't even come into contact with where it would kill biological life as we know it, but they still and radiation and all sorts of crazy shit. And there's still life 
in these worst conditions in the in the entire planet, there's still life there. So like Jersey Shore and Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. That's where Godzilla lives. That's what you just described. Holy shit! We we came from Godzilla. <gasps> Godzilla. That's it. That's the. We don't need even do need to do more of the list. This is the one. That's what. <laughs> that's, that's, it's interesting. Though. Nailed it. it. It's a theory that explains how we went from no energy in light. Like it takes energy to sustain life, and we if we came from a no life scenario, we would need energy first. So it's not that it created energy. It just used that friction to create that static electricity, right? Which then created that or stored that energy to be that spark of life. That's pretty wild. The word you're looking for there, I think is catalyst. So the, the, when you have all of the, sorry guys, cut that out. When you have all of the chemical makeup, the, all the chemicals that it takes to create life, you still need a catalyst, an event to make them come together. Beetles come together. Uh, to right f- start their um, the the cells multiplying and dividing and etc. Um, I won't touch on other ones because Ron probably might hit on some of the other <laughs> ones, but th- that catalyst in this case might be that that heat exchange which created the the friction which created the electricity which charged those molecules and set us on the path that we're on. Huh? Interesting. It's an interesting one. Yeah. Fine. As I, as I look through, I mean, there's so many different theories out there. Narrowing it down to ten. Again, like anytime we do this show, when I'm doing it, I look for things that I continuously see over and over again. Ooh, Josh, I wonder if Ron's going to have religion in this list. <laughs> Where we came from. I'm not oh. telling. <laughs> I'll right. never tell. I'll never tell. <laughs> hey, by the way, real quickly. Ron, it's been a long time since you and I have been on a podcast together. Holy crap, I just was thinking about that. Yeah, in person, especially. Well, aside from the Brady show. You know, I'm talking about in this The r- Tom Brady show? Come on, bro. Jeez. Let's be cool here. <laughs> I would never get on a Brady podcast, but I'd get on a Tom Brady. You wouldn't no, actually, I wouldn't Brady get on a Tom Brady. Either. I'd rather be on a Brady Bunch podcast than a Tom Brady podcast. You were twice. I was. Which we'll talk about more. I totally ripped up no, the I... Brady and said how much how stupid I would, no, thought it was. No, And then did the show. I still, I, still, I still feel I'm going to get some heat for not, not taking your guys' invite yet to come sit yeah, on the show. Yeah, you are. Yeah. I'm I'm rightfully to, so. I'm about to skip over you completely. Especially when you bring it Josh, up. Josh, you ready to come yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. I have never watched a single episode that's, ever. That's totally fine. I have like, I'm sorry. I'm well, totally you, hijacking your that's show. That's all right. Um, we, I would plan on plugging the whole show <laughs> later. At the end of the I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm I just have kidding. all walks of life on the show. People who have never seen the show. People that hate the show. Me. And people that love the show. <laughs> you're not the only cool. one. Let's so talk about, I, you're going to have to tell me about the show at the you end. You have to watch never. an episode in order to be on the show. It's part of how it works. Oh, oh right. no. You have to watch an episode oh, ahead of being okay. on the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just one episode. We, yeah. break, oh, okay. we break it down. We go beat by I, beat. I like that. He cool. goes, before I can even finish, I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I wanted to go in blind, but if I got to watch. Number nine. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like it. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. You no. okay? <laughs> Number <laughs> Wonderful. No, do you guys want to just do your no, own no, podcast over there? Number nine. So the Brady Bunch. Number nine, Electric Spark. Ah, yes. Lightning. Is, is this whose show is it? It's Sorry. a live I, fucking show. This is a, look, this is a, no, I know. This is an entourage. This show is this really is for a... ad. Everyone, shut off their camera. <laughs> you guys do your own Brady podcast upstairs. I'll just say these to Adam. I won't have description, and Adam will just tell us what they are. So it's no, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha is like okay. the one that's really. Gotta stop Elec- me from doing that. Electric spark. No, you're fine. Actually, it's cool. The electrical spark theory refers to the premise that at one point in the past, during the formation of the solar system, an electric spark created in some type of primordial matter brought about the first life forms. There are two distinct versions of the spark of life theory. The first of these versions hold that the first form of life came into existence following one spark or on one particular spark day, <laughs> the other version, or has, must be the sixth day of the week, the other <laughs> version argues that life came into existence or rather emerged following prolonged sparking rather one, than one specific spark. The dominant version of the spark of life theory, however, seems to have been first put forward vaguely in 1871 in a letter from Charles Darwin yes. to botanist Joseph Hooker, in which yes. Darwin suggested the original spark of life may have begun in a warm little pond with all sorts of ammonia and phosphoric salts, light heat, electricity, etc. Present to that, a protein compound was chemically formed ready to undergo still more 
complex changes. And before you speak on this, I just want to say <laughs> he's, he's, a lot of, he's censoring you. A lot, of the, a lot of these theories you'll notice. Now, some of these theories I have in here have nothing to do with shit. <laughs> but because they're theories, but a lot of these theories just have like kind of almost connective tissue, if you will, sure. right? <laughs> that all kind of link together. Probably, I'd say six or seven of them almost all kind of touch on each other, if you will. <laughs> you're going to hear, you're going to hear salts yeah. in here a lot. So you're going to hear ammonia, potassium pools, cesspools of, of different types. You're going to probably hear something about the tides. We hear yeah, there's about a lot. salt. We hear about bath salts and eating people's face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Go ahead. So electric spark, Adam, it all the floor started is yours. With a big bang. <laughs> bang. <Very> good. <laughs> um, no, no, that, that kind of touched base on what I was talking about with lightning. So the, uh, one of and this is one of Darwin's theories. This isn't like oh Adam Smart and he came up with it. No, this is Darwin's theory. Um, <laughs> the those those chemicals that would sit in those oh. pools, the tide pools, where the 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 in the early formation of Earth would um, get superheated and super cooled with the inclement weather that Earth had at the time. And one of the catalysts that that Darwin had proposed is possibly lightning that was had actually hit one of these pools of all of these mo- these building blocks and it struck it and it activated those building blocks to begin the 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 cellular uh formations and breakdowns between cells so i mean it's ironically that far 150 years ago darwin pretty much nailed how they can create life now so th- those have been recreated in labs now where you've got the test tubes of exp- with the atmosphere of earth proposed from fucking 2 billion years ago and then they activate the molecules that are in there with electricity sure enough algae starts to form so it's it's amazing to see actually happen you can prove a theory for something that happened on earth 2 billion years ago it's it's insane and Darwin proposed it originally. It's really cool. Well, maybe not originally, but he was certainly one who who documented it. He documented it first. Yes. According to Ron. Yeah. 1871. There it is. This would have been after his uh, Origin of Species, which was what, 1859? God, I'm so smart. Know when that Aren't was. you guys just love to fucking know me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so lucky I don't to even have know you. that 1859 was correct. Someone looked that up. <laughs> just kidding. We'll, we'll get right on that. Buddy. Yeah, thanks. Alexa. <laughs> just kidding. She's not here. She's not here. No, we here. fired Alexa. That bitch is dumb yes. as a can of hammers, so she's gone. <laughs> she drops the ball every she, time. She won every <laughs> time. Every time. Hmm. Nice. She could nice. play some good music, though. Tack, any comment on Hi. Electric Spark? Oh. Uh-huh. No? I mean, it just sounds like, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Frankenstein. I don't know. Yeah. It's alive. That's alive, actually, that's alive. actually, I like that. So, I you know, when I was looking through that, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Frank, and when, when was it's Fra- when, Frankenstein? Oh, sorry. Frederick Frankenstein. <laughs> when, uh, when what year was that book uh, released? Which book? Mary Shelley's Fra- Frankenstein? Yeah. No idea. You tell me. Uh, and, I don't and know. You had the <laughs> I thought you knew. <laughs> we were talking about books and when they're published. I don't know. Uh, of all uh, the people who should know about a book publishing date, Ron, it, right? it should be you, you buddy. Sh- you should know all about You books. managed the books a million for how long? Yeah, don't you know everything about books? <laughs> don't you know when every, every book was even published? Books a million. I know. That was the I joke. Know. I know. It's okay. It's all right, buddy. We did that. So the funny part about that inside joke is that uh, we said that on a, I think a living podcastly podcast one time a long time ago. Is it Ron's a manager of Books a Million? He's like, dude, what the fuck, man? I'm your friend. I don't manage a Books a Million. <laughs> Whatever. All right, it's okay, buddy. It's all right. All right. Uh, number. Let me see. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, this one has a lot of big words, so you might have to help me out. Wow. Magma and this word. That's not a big word, Ron. <laughs> ma- 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 magma. Oh. Now, this one is chemosynthesis. I think I'm saying that right. And I saw the definition of this as like photosynthesis, but heat instead of light. That's the best I mean, little right. quick definition of yeah. chemosynthesis I, I kind of had to go and find. Cool. Makes sense. I the churning metal of the outer core creates and sustains Earth's magnetic field. The hottest part of the core is actually the bullion um, discon- discontinuity, where temperatures reach 6,000 degrees Celsius or 10,800 Fahrenheit, as hot as the surface of the sun. 
The inner core is a hot, dense ball of mostly iron. Iron. You're a hot, dense ball. <laughs> oh, burn. Thank you, baby. Oh, wait a minute. It's a. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I Damn, just... you're hot. That was a burn. <laughs> so, <laughs> scientists theorize amino acids brought by meteorite bombardment 3.2 billion years ago would have been enough to seed the basis of life and simple cell form. It would have been a rare occurrence due to the fact you would need these meteorites to enter the Earth's core through opening in the earth such as volcanoes super volcanoes geyser basins and at the time large exposed areas in the earth's crust to the outer mantle so a meteor through a volcano so kind of like a half court shot Pretty yeah exactly hard. yeah well <laughs> volcano super volcano um geyser basins and exposed areas of the earth at the time Chris, like 3. The, 2 billion years ago during the bombardment era though yes. there were so many millions of meteorites and asteroids that were hitting earth exactly it, so maybe it, it wasn't was, such a you know that's like a half court shot, shot with a yeah. thousand balls you're yeah, gonna get exactly. one yeah you've got, it, well that's kind of what Sounds i think it's fun. saying um but would have been much more likely during this period of time on Earth. However, this theory is not currently able to be tested, I guess in lab, uh, due to the extreme heat needed to reproduce these conditions. So when I heard this, I was kind of thinking it was like the land version of the deep sea vents. Almost kind of like that, because when it's talking about extreme heat down in there, I think that's kind of like a just from what I read on the chemosynthesis, because I didn't know what that I had never heard it. Because when I thought of chemosynthesis, I thought of like chemo for cancer. You yeah, know, I yeah. Sm I, I smell a I smell a, a fish here. No, no, no uh, fish. This is your twist. I was no. Um, I wish. I wish. So, I wish I was that smart. But um, so let me ask you this: the that theory is not proposing that the life that started on Earth came from the asteroid. It's saying it was already here. The molecules were here. The, the, the building blocks were here. But that asteroid or that meteor creating the friction of heat when it entered. Kinetic energy. Yeah, yeah, wherever it went, that was with the energy that started it here on Earth. It isn't saying it came here from that asteroid. I right? guess it said amino acids. Like yeah. the amino acids on the meteorites with the heat from the core. Oh, origin of life is elsewhere. Oh, so well, yeah. it'd be a combination then. If it was amino it's acids, kind of like panspermia, which yeah, you know, yeah, we know that's going to end up being on the list because <laughs> <laughs> you already said it would be. I, well, I don't know your list. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't that's my favorite theory of all uh, li life creation. Hmm. What, uh, whatever. Sperm. Anyway, that one was called magma. <laughs> that one was called magma chemosynthesis. Magma chemosynthesis. Mag magma, that big word. Magma. 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 All right. So that was number eight. All right. Number seven, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> comes, yes. That's how you come backwards. Panspermia. Panspermia. Ah, yes. I you just want me to do this one for you? Spermia. No, I'm just saying. Yeah. I got seven A and seven B. Ooh. Ooh, the B should be interesting, Ooh. right? Huh. All right. I always prefer Bs over A's. It's all right. So <laughs> okay. I don't know Batteries? What means. Titties? No. There's a B battery? Wait a minute now. No. Is there is like uh, butts and asses? I was talking cup size, but. Oh. I just said titties. Did you? I didn't, oh, hear. I didn't hear it. <laughs> we were too busy flapping our gums. Titties. Okay, so number seven, seven. right? <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at Damn it. Like one of these days I'll get that right. Um, panspermia. Perhaps life did not begin on Sperm. Earth at all but was brought here from elsewhere in space, mm -hmm. a notion known as panspermia. <laughs> For instance, rocks regularly get blasted off Mars by cosmic impacts, it's and a number of Mar <laughs> and a number of Martian meteorites have been found on Earth that some researchers have controversially suggested brought microbes over here, potentially making us all Martians originally. Other scientists have even suggested that life might have hitched um, hitchhiked on comets from other star systems. However, even if this concept were true, the question of how life began on Earth would then only change to how life began elsewhere in space. Yeah. Which is true. You're only right. just taking, well, how did it begin here? Okay, well, if that's the reason, well, then how the hell did it begin over there? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Which which makes it l literally infinite theory. Right. Yeah, it's just like So Mars got its rocks off then? Hey. Oh, boom! <laughs> <Hi -oh! laughs> this is why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> nice. Now, uh, the movie critics out there are going to hate this reference. Tack, I know you know what movie I'm about to bring I out. I know what you're about to bring yeah, out. Yeah, you do too. So one of my favorite movies of all time, because they go back and they, disc they, they give a 
a their proposed theory of how life began on Earth through panspermia was a little bit more intense than Mars rocks falling on Earth and then bam, there's life. It actually was engineered. Wait a minute. Panspermia. Wait a minute. Remember, oh, there, there's, there's a, a bee. There's a bee on right. this. Will, so uh, let's hold this thought I will shut the fuck up. for seven B directed panspermia. Yes. Oh, <laughs> nice. The hypothesis. So it's like so it's like porn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. Sweet. Earth like, is the napkin. It's this regular. Is, it's regular oh. sex and then directed sex. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thank you. This is why I'm here. Yes. 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 Oh directed panspermia. And the and the sperm word is key here. With, with I've been Tack's giggling little, about it. I'm giggling about it every time. They're you say real it. giggles. He's not. We missed you, Tag. Not faking it. <laughs> I'm like he, sperm. <laughs> the hypothesis that life was per purposefully sent to earth with more big words purposefully sent to earth from somewhere else in the universe by means similar to those of panspermia see below well for my list it's above uh, belief in directed panspermia lies on a vast spectrum some versions of the theory suggest that ancient astronauts visited earth and implanted evolved life on our planet before returning for regular visits to check our progress most mm-hmm. notably don't we have a friend who believes in this shit <laughs> Remember that conversation like 12 years ago at my house with a friend of ours? Well, there's, go a lot of people, there's a lot of people who believe that. He, they, I don't know. I, I don't remember. Go I don't remember. Uh, well, I guess that's going to have to be completely off of uh, off mic. <laughs> this is about the Anunnaki or something, right? Uh, no. Is that what they're called? We're going to get Anunnaki. there. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Some versions of the theory suggest that ancient astronauts visited Earth and implanted evolved life on our planet before returning for regular visits. That's like, this is like, uh, what the hell is that alien movie that came out a few years <laughs> ago? I love your beach alien? ball. Thank you, sir. No, no, no. Uh, Prometheus. The Prometheus, yes. yeah. Um, <laughs> That's most notably during to. the blossoming hmm. of ancient Egyptian culture culture others believe single-celled organisms were sent to our planet by an advanced civilization to either avoid extinct extinction or to simply expand that species inhabited borders the latter certainly garnered more attention among the scientific community with carl sagan and losef schlofsky it sounds like a made-up name uh <laughs> dedicating a not insignificant amount of time to addressing the theory in their 1966 work intelligent life in the universe so you got panspermia where it just happened naturally and then directed panspermia where people think that some other alien culture purposely implanted life which before we get into a conversation about this will launch us into a different part of the list that goes off a little woohoo Really? <laughs> yeah, hmm. <laughs> we kind of maybe get out of the scientific and into the more cuckoo type of <laughs> shit that people have thought. This is about. where I blossom, guys. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> little little you know middle of the list there that should be fun. But I so I absolutely ahead. loved the Prometheus uh, uh, movie because of its theory that supports panspermia and how life began on Earth. They actually go through a whole montage of the the alien engineer master race. That, that comes down and it isn't just like, oh, they're just going to drop some seeds on the ground and there's panspermia. Suddenly all life exists on Earth. No, this breaks down to even more more of a, a DNA structured level. So uh, and I don't know the accuracy of this, but in the movie, the science that they referenced said that a human has shares like 70 percent of its DNA with a banana. And same thing for everything around us on the entire planet. There is a certain level of genetic makeup that we have is similar to each other. So all what that really tells us is that all of the life on Earth that became more than just single cell organisms all had original roots somewhere, somehow along the chain. If you go back far enough, you'll see we could have evolved either into bananas or into humans. I mean, there, there's genetic sequencing that's there that matches that. So what. Prometheus does for the panspermia, for the engineered panspermia, is they have a, one of their engineer master race people um, consume some sort of liquid and then it deteriorates him and breaks him down and it tears his DNA all the way down, breaks down his DNA. And then from there, that goes into the rivers and the oceans and then that starts the creation of life and makes bananas and makes you know grass and makes wood, trees, whatever. Whatever the hell <laughs> is alive on Earth, it all started with that one dude. Which is kind of cool because it does make a lot of sense because we share a lot of the same DNA. So that that part's really really interesting. They do a really good job of it too. So in, yay. A, in the movie, 
Yeah. Um, no, no, no. The, during oh. when it actually happened, I was there. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah, of course. You know that's a documentary, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you actually made me sit down and watch that. Obviously, years ago now. But yeah. Yeah, I, I was that. made to watch that movie too. It's good by Adam. No, but oh. by John. You know, we all know yeah. John. John made me watch that movie. It's a great movie. It was an assignment for a podcast. It was good. A lot. So it took a lot of critics. You have to really appreciate uh, what's the director's name that does all the alien movies. Help me out here. Steven Spielberg. No, no John something. Um, God, I can't remember <sighs> now. Hold on, I'll look ta- it up. Oh, you talking about like literally the alien movies? Yeah, yeah that's what Prometheus was. Yeah, Prometheus. Was all right, yeah, is yeah. A tie-in. Um, oh, is it? Um, he's about to die. He's like seventy-eight years old. He's it's um, um Blade Runner. He did. I can't uh, believe I can't believe the guy. All these name. other movies. I think he already is dead. No, um, no, no. He's still alive. Um, because he's just Jesus released. Christ. He released another. Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott. Yeah, that's it. Ridley, Ridley Scott. Scott. Damn it! Oh, man, that felt God. like I just panspermia hit myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wait, wait. I'm not the only hey, eighth I think he just, here. He just pants spermia himself. <laughs> anyway, he does what? His a, well, a little grin from <laughs> pants spermia. That's like a <laughs> and then starts talking. Oh, fuck all we, y'all. Did we hurt Ron's feelings? <laughs> wait, I'm done say, with my list. Wait, did you say pants? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh man, this good. guy. We need, studio, we need studio laugh tracks. Yeah. All right. I'll um, on that. Uh, no, I'll make it re- funny. I'll edit it to where it sounds funny. Re- <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was awesome. <coughs> Score. I'm just kidding. Oh, burn. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. God damn it. I think uh, Josh was talking. <laughs> I hope. Nope. We, oh, oh, no. No, <laughs> no Ron was talking. Ron said remember panspermia, oh. then gave us a bunch of shit because none of us laughed. And then Adam was going to say something. Ridley Scott. He gave Adam shit because he chuckled. Yeah. And then, for, and then God damn didn't it. say... No, uh, Ridley Scott. So he, Ridley Scott has got a really interesting take on some scientific theories, and he puts those into film, into his into his works of art, and it's it's impressive. When I, do, I want that guy to make another 50 uh, screenplays just, just so we have his brain out on paper because he's he's getting old and he's one of the most unique directors producers uh visionaries in in movies i've ever seen i've ever, and it's, losing him is going to be a sad day i think he's fantastic nice i could yep. sit here and talk directors all day but i won't so <laughs> <laughs> all right so that was number seven, seven a and b Panspermia and directed panspermia. Are you, as you said, engineered? Yeah, it's just same thing. Yeah, same, yeah. same concept. Purposed, purposeful yes. panspermia. Yeah. All right, number six. I hate when I accidentally panspermia. All right. Raelians. Raelians. Yes, mm. I swear. <laughs> this is like, everybody's going to be like, this is the fucking made up one. It's got to be. <laughs> oh, there's one of these is made up. I yeah. don't think he explained Did he explain that? He did. Well, yeah, I said, there, he was, said, there, was, I said there was a twist. twist. That's it. But you, <laughs> everybody what? assumed the twist is one of them is made up. That is a twist, well, though? I think it's the How, keto acidosis one. Yet. Maybe that's not the twist. Oh. I think <laughs> so it's the we key, don't know what the twist is? Chemo, chemo, I think it's the chemo Chemosynthesis? One. Dude, you give me way more credit than I deserve, but okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Raelians hold one of the more peculiar, I almost said pectacular, don't ask me why. <sighs> that's a Big Brother reference watching, right there. Watching too much gay porn. Okay. <laughs> Raelians <laughs> Mr. hold Mr. one Mr. Pectacular from Big Brother. Nobody yes, knows. it is. Jesse. Yeah, yeah Jesse. Jesse. Very yeah. good. Now, oh, God, that sounded... Why no, I, I watch, know that. I watch quality television. <laughs> Sorry. I, I like Big Brother. I just haven't seen it in a while. Uh, well, that's one. one of the old, old seasons. Oh, like gotcha, season gotcha. Yeah, but four he, he, or something. He's shown know. up in like a bunch eight of them. more seasons. Oh, he's yeah. been in in and out of several. Probably more oh, than anybody else. Must have been the seasons I've missed then. Um, <laughs> Raelians hold one of the more peculiar theories of origin of this list. According to... Uh, Claude Vora 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 alone. I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> AKA AKA Rail, but it's spelled R A E L, not 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 like Rail a girl. Thousands of years ago, when Earth was a land was a land of only lifeless water and clouds, scientists from an extraterrestrial humanoid race called the Elium. Weren't you just saying something about like this? I said Anunnaki. Ah, uh, okay, no. Sorry, Adenaki. That's delicious. Um, <laughs> it's nice when you have like a light little butter sauce. Yeah, with it. it's fucking fantastic. Adenaki soup. Mm. Oh man, <laughs> I'm getting hungry now. Uh, brought genetically engineered flora and fauna down to earth. 
They broke up the clouds, formed fertile land, and left them to grow autonomously on Earth as an experiment with the occasional intervention from a human Elium hybrid messenger created to help guide humanity in time of crisis. God damn. Where are you now, Rail? <laughs> <laughs> we need you. This is so, the deity's name, is Rail. Yes. Is this a is, is this it holy like a, is it is it I guess it's not a deity. This isn't like a divinity theory. Now this is Rail, I think is the name of the person, I guess, who are we I don't in know. a cult? Uh, yes. Are we in a cult now? You already are. Cult. You didn't cult. Know cult. This is how it's, this is how it starts. <laughs> yeah, this was really weird, guys. I, I don't know if anybody has any <laughs> thoughts on it. But I've, I've really actually strange. heard of Raelians before, but I think I've heard about this before. So you probably believe it was it. like in Stargate, right? <laughs> you probably yeah. believe it. Yeah, Star <laughs> Stargate. Oh, Jimmy, dude, about it. Stargates. I don't actually have that on the list, but Stargate's like an awesome theory of. Yeah, that's Populating cool. the Earth with just straight up full on bodied aliens from another planet. It's like, here, we're just going to stick you over here. And you just you, we need you now. to mine this shit for us. They're slaves. In Stargate, humans yeah. are slaves. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. <clears throat> so, in, so, so in the Raelian's theory, it's just a science experiment, basically. That's, is that how I understood it? That, that we had like caretakers for our evolution or our, well, how I don't even know how to describe. We are the computer to answer the ultimate question. That's what that sounds like. They're just like, here you go, live. We're just going to Yeah, it was almost like we were just, I don't know, like an ant farm. So it's like a, a game of Sims. So we're a fucking yeah. game of Sims. Yes, yeah, Sims, the well, exactly. Is that giving away another one on there? No. <laughs> I didn't know if you had simulation. Like Sims, simulation you know. <laughs> you didn't have simulation? I do Do you want to hear the scary part about this? Hmm. About the simulation theory? Not to tangent on your list. I'm sorry. I got a scary story No, that's what it. this list is about. 99 <laughs> to the... Like fifteenth decimal point nine 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 nine, etc., yeah. is the percentage of chance that we're living in a simulation right now. They found like ones the and zeros in nature. I'm telling like you, like the Elon matrix. You mean like, the matrix? Um, yes. Yeah. Or or yeah. not the matrix? Just a, a hard drive somewhere in space. It's just a com we're a computer program that's running. The, the so the end of the world podcast that I've listened to and I've talked about that before. Josh Clark. Jo yeah, Josh Clark. Yeah. He has a um, he he references other books and I've downloaded and listened to those other books on audio podcast and the percentage of us actually living in a simulation, at least on paper. All right. Granted, it doesn't matter if you don't care. So let's put it that way. So for the people that, you know, really don't want to hear that we're living in a simulation, fine. So be it. Enjoy your programmed life. Have fun, whatever you want to do. However, the percentage is so high that we are living in a simulation. It's almost impossible that we're not. It's re it's unbelievably. Let me see if I can find that book. I mean, that that sounds really <clears throat> nutty. It it does a little bit. I mean, it's not <laughs> completely off rocker it's, nutty. It's really it's basically you take simulation theory and re and and tweak it a little bit. And instead of calling it like a computer simulation, that sounds pretty wild. But just if it if we can trick the five senses of the body, then it doesn't really matter if it's a computer or space magic or j it. It literally doesn't matter. It just is something that says we are not real. All of our sensory input is fake. It sums up a lot of different theories. Well, it, to me, it's <clears throat> the reason people believed in deities years ago is because they, they had one for the sun and one for the sky and one for the oceans because they had no way to explain those. It seems like we always uh -huh. go to these kinds of strange theories when we can't explain things, like we can't explain why are we here, how did life start, blah blah blah. So then people come up with stuff like this. That to me is just but there is beyond a bit of off science. the wall. There is a little bit of science that's kind of backing it up. Yeah, that's what. But that's what people would tell you back when. Oh, the the god, the, Who's the, people? Yeah. people. You, I mean, you can like, really you know, tell the, 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 the sun god and all that kind of stuff. Well, I'm sorry, Josh. No, go you're ahead. good. I was, I was just gonna say you can really tell the simulation by like. The moon projector up on the skybox. <laughs> okay, that, um, that's not a simulation the, theory. The sun projector that just that's flat Earth theory. rotates. Um, <laughs> the book, the book. By the way, I'm gonna give it a plug because it's a fucking good read. It's uh, I'm not as smart as the book needs you to be. Let me just phrase that that way because I'm not good with the high end yeah, math. Stop. That's needed. No, 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 no. This is this gets so deep into the trigonometry fucking wormhole. I can't I can't keep up. But it's uh, Nick Bostrom is the author and it's called Super Intelligence. And that book is about AI. It's about artificial intelligence <laughs> nice. and how it can 
you know, progress us further so much faster once we've developed the first AI. And they're thinking the reason that we can't develop AI is because the AI that's running our program called humanity uh, won't let us create an AI smarter than the AI that's controlling us. So it's really kind of an interesting, uh, great filter if you want to think of it that way. But do you guys, do we have time for a story real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Because we're about to, I have a that was number story. six. So okay. we're about to hit into the break. Good time for a story. You think? Okay. Um, Okay, I think I may have told you this, Ron. I may have told you t- anyway. So uh, I was listening to Hysteria Fifty One and their Simulation Theory episode, and it gets super detailed, right? Which I already knew all about Simulation Theory, blah blah blah. But the great thing about that show is it gets really detailed and starts talking about things. As I'm listening to it, I have a personal experience that I can't. Oh, you explain. did tell me this, yeah, 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 that I can't explain, and I don't know what the hell was going on. This is cool. But it was like my, I don't know, subconsciously my mind was being blown. And like, I was, oh, <laughs> this, yeah. sounds, this sounds crazy, but I don't know what else to call this. But as I'm listening to this, I'm literally, I'm driving, right? And I'm listening to this and just going like, this is fucking nuts. Like, not nuts, like they're crazy. Just like my mind is fucking like comprehending all this or having trouble understanding it all. And as I'm listening to this and thinking... I started to get like super lightheaded, right? Like very lightheaded and I'm driving mind you. And I feel like, I know this sounds like I'm crazy, but I feel like my mind was being sucked up like out of my body. And while this was happening, I was getting like these flashes of like memories that I've never done before. Like it was fucking weird. And I was getting, and it was, I was like, holy shit. Like I'm trying to drive straight and now I don't know which way is up. Like that's how much I'm like dizzy and I feel like my mind's being pulled up and I'm getting flashes of memories of shit that I've never done before. And I can't even remember what they were, but I was just like, what the fuck? Like I was being quote woke or something, <laughs> but then I had to like pull, I pulled over and I like snapped out of it and I just felt it all like, like right back to normal again. I was like, <laughs> he's like, shit, he's onto us. Yeah. This I was is like, why you what don't- the fuck was that? <laughs> This is why you don't shoot heroin with dirty needles, Tack. Oh, you know, my mom said something about that once. No. It was fucking weird, and I can't explain it. And uh, yeah, I do want to go back and re-listen to that episode again and see what happens. You're afraid to, though, aren't you? A little bit. But <laughs> I'm not going to do all of driving. This time, maybe I'll just lay in a bed and listen to it. You know, just Take some mushrooms. Just, no, no, yeah, just see what happens. <laughs> no. Noise. So John and uh, Brent from Hysteria 51 are going to want to come back in and host another Twisted 10. This Hell is something yeah. that I don't mind telling our, our listeners about. Let's just hope that they can bring the heat like they brought last time that led us to this gigantic wormhole we got into with flat earthers and yeah. <laughs> all hey. the way down that rabbit. I was happy with it. That was a, that was a good outcome for getting our, our, our fun podcast fact out too. Uh, Brent hosted or guest hosted a show, the episode of the Brady bunch. Nice. As well as his wife and him again and John go forth also. So, you know, you guys are way behind the curve. So wow. that Josh, out is he telling me that having Brent and John come down and host an episode of the twisted 10, Ain't that big of a deal if they'll go and host some Brady Bunch show? Ooh. Is that what you're saying? Damn. <laughs> On that note. Ooh. Damn. Clearly, they'll do any podcast. Damn. Wow. Oh, you know we got to bust your balls about it a little bit, though. Uh, Jimmy, I'm sorry. Don't murder me if you don't mind. Um, uh, I, lo- I love your show, buddy. Yeah. He's totally going to defriend all of us on Facebook. <laughs> no. Um, no. Just come do a show. All right. All right. Oh, that was uh, number six. So time for a break. It's cool. <laughs> way to do it. <laughs> way to transition that, buddy. Is that, was that great? <laughs> that was a beach ball and you fucking nailed it. Yeah, yeah buddy. All right. Yeah, we'll be right back. You never try if you have to. You can't survive if they won't let you. Will you hide away in a bedroom? It's not really just what you used to. So you put us in pictures trying to make it a home But it's only a home if you're eating alone You find yourself waiting on the ring of the phone Swearing to yourself that you're fine on your own You're asking all the right questions Searching for your direction Though you're reaching out to someone Oh, 
action Still you're putting up pictures Trying to make it a home with his own Really a home if you're sleeping alone You find yourself waiting on a ring and a phone Swearing to yourself that you're fine on your own And we're back <laughs> Motherfucker <laughs> Oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> Nice Do uh, I the- like it <laughs> Before we get uh, back into this list, I want to say yeah. something, and I'm going to try and be as mas- masculine and, and not, Josh, I'm not hitting on you or anything oh, with thank this. You. Thank you. But, dude, your freaking hair is awesome. Thank I know you. people have commented on yeah. your lovely locks before. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like some ridiculously good hair going there. Thank bro. you. So it, it's actually very much on purpose right now. I have decided oh. to grow my hair out. It is, um, it is so becoming. I'm, I'm like intention i'm shampooing once a week i'm conditioning every other like i'm like paying What's attention so my hair grows right he's comp- just i'm no, growing- no no i shampooing once a week yeah you don't need to shampoo your hair yeah, the unless nat- it's like dirt like debris dirty there's no shampooing your hair all the time is actually bad for you have you ever, did you ever use pantene pro v hmm? it's fucking fantastic it is fantastic. do you rinse and repeat no. <laughs> Did you? Oh my God. Rinse and repeat, dude. Rinse Just do it one time. I'm telling you, <laughs> that second time is fucking amazing. I, people laugh at this until they try it per, and they go, plus. holy shit. No, Pantene Pro V, rinse and repeat next time. I'm telling you. That second time, you'd be like, wow, what a difference. Okay. Yeah, I, I legitimately believe that that is what Margaret owns right now. So I wonder where Andrea is on this awesome. conversation. She'll buy the, like, she has issues with the the shampoos you can buy at the grocery store, for the most part. Some of them are okay, but for the most yeah. part, she's like, oh, that's just, none of that stuff's going to work on, on hair, really. It's just, it's going to get the dirt out, but it doesn't treat your hair. She, she buys, like, the most expensive Paul Mitchell shit that she gets at a discount because of her job, but yeah. uh, for her, and then she gets me, like, the Swab. Wash everything. The, swab. <coughs> the five in one. Yeah, your five balls, one. your chin, your hair, your mouth. Wash balls. it all. <laughs> Mine's white and just says black, it's just soap. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. in a bottle. <laughs> no. Have you ever had hey, look, I've been there. Have you ever been so poor? I know where you're you're gonna probably chime in here, Tack, because you you know yeah. you you, you <laughs> what's the term? You self uh Self, um, self-identify as a poor person. No, <laughs> denigrate. <laughs> How PC <laughs> of you? I don't know. I can't think of it. But I have had to shampoo with hand soap before. I've been there. I've had to do it <laughs> with Dawn. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> never done that though. Hang on a minute. You just one up. What me, about brother? shampoo with bar soap? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just talking about. Oh, the, uh, oh I did say hand you soap. You said but hand yeah, bar soap. soap. Yeah, yeah, okay, bar gotcha. Soap. But no, uh, thank you, Ron. That feels that feels very nice. Thank mm. you. No, oh, you're welcome, buddy. It's nice. Don't you suck his dick or something. Number five. <laughs> wait, 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 I, didn't know, I didn't know you two were fucking, but all right. No, I'm just yeah, oh, re- I have to recap. Sorry, I have to recap. Nobody said anything about mine. Oh, great. I have to cool. get these numbers right again. All right. Number 10, Deep Sea Vents. Number nine, Electric Spark. Number eight, Magma Chemosynthesis. That's made up. Number <laughs> God. guys think I'm smart. <laughs> Number seven, panspermia. <laughs> Giggle. And number six, Raelians. Cause that one sounds real. Mm-hmm. All right. Number five. So you think that oh, you have this nailed down. Which one's fake? If one is even fake. Number five. Alien garbage theory. <laughs> okay. Come again? <laughs> Alien garbage theory. So we are the napkin. <laughs> <laughs> Noise. First proposed by Cornell's Thomas Gold, the alien garbage theory suggests that life on Earth initially began with extraterrestrial ter- waste products coming into contact with Earth. 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 <laughs> Earth. <laughs> Earth. 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 Here's the Earth. Uh, and with uh, life. Oh, gosh. I totally messed that up. Hold on. Earth after alien visitation. Gold's theory has been expanded to suggest that when the alien visitors discovered the consequences of their littering, they decided to take the moral route and nurture Earth, earthly life towards enlightenment by introducing the tools of science, architecture, art, religion, philosophy, etc. So is this equivalent to like not doing the dishes for a while and then you get like mold? 
growing in your sink. Yeah, we're maggots or something. I don't you know. know. So like I, I <laughs> deal with leftover this cheeseburger with like a kiddie pool in the backyard. This is where this happens to me oh, where you leave better. it outside for a while and then suddenly you have tadpoles and you have a moral dilemma. Do I kill these hundreds of tadpoles in this kiddie pool or do I let them become frogs and then inhabit my backyard? Hmm. Always kill the tadpoles. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, frogs are great for like mosquitoes and stuff. I'm going to take this. I'm going to spin your list or that that one around a little bit because <clears throat> that's what we do here. We twist shit. Um, so that's almost like the taking it to a sci fi level to Star Trek. What's Star Trek's prime directive? <clears throat> not to not to interfere. <laughs> right. Either with it, other civilizations. So like even if it means they're getting ready to just wipe themselves out. If you haven't had contact with them, you're not going to have if if first contact has not happened, you're not going to interfere. Right. No matter what. Yeah. And in one of the uh, <clears throat> sorry, in one of the episode or one of the movies, the mere sight of the Star Trek Enterprise, the spaceship shaped that um, indigenous species of humanoid creatures on the planet to now then worship that thing as a deity and they shape their whole society around that vision of that. So in this case, if we were the accident from from one of these alien races or something yeah. that that created humanity, then yeah, we are, you know, they fucked up the prime directive right off the there bat. There was an Orville episode about that too. Yeah, I was going to say yes. <laughs> Orville. <laughs> That's a fantastic fucking show by the way. Yes. Isn't if it you, only one season? How many seasons are on there? There's two. Absolutely. Ah. If you are even close to a Star Trek fan, you must attack. Thank you for bringing me. And I finally listened to him and I show us I powered great. through those two seasons in like four days. Star Trek I mean, is half of it. The comedy value is the other half. I'm of telling it, you, but which they, is they the, do, who's the writer? What's his? It's uh, Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. They do such a fantastic job with the sets, with the costumes. They crush any Star Trek show on aliens. Well, except mm. for maybe the newer Star Trek shows. But I mean, as far as their their makeup their makeup. costumes vfx is their storylines are probably 80 percent star trek next generation their yeah. characters are probably 90 percent based off star trek next generation yeah, but it's, it's originally intended but as a sparse or a it is but it's such spoof. a fantastically yeah. good one and it's so standalone it stands alone on its own amazingly to be kind of a somewhat of a we need a i'd new say it's not star- a copy or a spoof i'd say it is a comedy in space inspired by star trek and okay. i would leave it but there. it also has a serious moments too so it has Absolutely. a really good writing really good story fantastic so. put seth mcfarlane he can afford the writing for any show he wants he's fucking great yes yeah. the movie similar i would describe it in all of the same ways i would describe it in all of the same ways uh, but it had alan rickman in it. Oh yeah, yeah. It Die was Hard with Tim Allen. <laughs> yes, with Tim Allen. Um, yeah, yeah. Harry Potter, Fantasy uh, Quest. Yeah, yeah, something Galaxy Quest. Quest. Galaxy, Galaxy Quest. Quest. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude, that was such a great movie, man. That was. I that was love good. that. That was awesome. Movie. You know the most ironic part about that? My parents love that movie. Of all people in the world, man. they love that movie. I just can't. And, and I, I know your parents a little bit. I cannot imagine them sitting down and watching Galaxy Quest. <laughs> right? <laughs> Me all. neither. I can picture your mom doing. It. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch it with her? Tag maybe. Okay, nice. Well, I wouldn't say we'd watched it, but anyway, go ahead. All right, that was number five. It was on the Alien garbage good for you, buddy. But alien garbage. Just happy you got laid. <laughs> <laughs> it's been two years. That, go ahead. <clears throat> that pretty much wraps up the fun little middle of the list there, where we talk about weird alien shit. Cool. Oh, so let's get back into some more scientific stuff. A couple newer theories. Um, man, I don't know about this one. I'm going to read it quick. I don't know how much discussion we'll have this, but maybe, maybe Adam has something to add. I don't uh, know. I don't want to be this, that guy. I don't want to be Norm from, uh, or, uh, no, uh is it Norm? Cliff. Cliff. No, I don't Cliff. want to be Cliff Laven. Hey, you know, no, hey, hey, uh, hey, you know what? Yeah. You know, no, I mean the, uh, Purines and Pyramidines there. <laughs> man, I'm that guy uh, in real life. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, uh, number four, Purines and in pyramidines all right and i really struggling to know that th- i i'm pretty sure i'm pronouncing that correctly that's i don't boy, think that's I'll a be, boy band i'll be uh, <laughs> i'll be honest i don't think it matters the scientists show how purines and pyramidides can form from a common precursor molecule that could have existed before life on earth began they find eight oxopurine <laughs> yeah that's what it says shares underlying similarities with pyramidine nucleotides 
Yeah, this is all Greek <clears throat> to me. These <clears throat> two nucleoids can form under the same chemical conditions on a sugar scaffold, then blind bind, <laughs> then bind together through molecular interactions, eventually resulting in the m- molecules that go on to become RNA. So, so, so say it's saying these chemicals can pretty much produce RNA. Ribyl nucleic acids. Okay. So does that, I, I'm trying to boil it down to a really unnecessarily simple level. So is the concept here that we came from the latent energy in sugars, like in carbohydrates that led to the creation of these RNA chains? Did I follow that right? So I tried. That's how I read it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to ignore this one, but it Ron, kept popping up. But it's it's it's, it's exactly it's what only I was about a couple say. years old. And Ron's I like, like, I don't fuck this one. Fuck it, oh, there I, it is yes. again. No, I, fuck it. No, I there it is to, again. I got ignoring it. I'm gonna have to do it. I kept on saying, fuck it. I kept on. Well, maybe I'll get deeper into what purines and pyrimidines are. No, that just led me down another rabbit hole of bullshit. Josh, you understand the twist is that that one's the truth. <laughs> All the rest are bullshit. <laughs> All the rest are totally <laughs> made so up. boring. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. That was uh, number four. <laughs> purines, and uh, one of these days I'll learn a lesson on numbering these. Purines on, and pyrimidines. All right. Cool. Number three. And this is from newscientist.com. Now, the reason the next two are sourced is for a reason. The reason this one is sourced is because it's the only place I could find this theory, and the first thing I saw it appear at was this month in the August of 2020. Okay. Okay. The everything first theory. And I kind of had to dig through this, what what I could see of it, because thank you, newscientist.com, assholes, for not letting me read the whole thing without having a subscription. <laughs> <laughs> this just him. Awesome. But, um, but, it, but at least I got enough of it uh, to figure out pretty much what it was called. Everything first. Many ideas have been proposed to explain how it began. Most are based on the assumption that cells are too complex to have formed all at once. So life must have started with just one component that survived and somehow created the others around it. When put into practice in the lab, however, these ideas don't produce anything particularly lifelike. It is, some researchers are starting to realize, like trying to build a car by making a chassis and hoping wheels and an engine will spontaneously appear. Ch- chassis. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Chassis. It's okay. Really? I S E. Yeah. The 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 a oh. chassis of a car is the frame basically. No, frame I'm not that doubting car. that. It's just weird that that's how it's spelt. That's all. I'm questioning spelt? that. Was it spelt? <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't want to say nothing. But <laughs> so this is not the made up one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> the. Uh, Alternative that life emerged fully formed seems even more unlikely. Yet perhaps astoundingly, two lines of evidence are converging to suggest that this is exactly what happened. It turns out that all the key molecules of life can form from the same simple carbon-based chemistry. What's more, that easily that they easily combine to make startlingly startlingly ah startlingly startlingly that is not how it looks like. Okay, startlingly, lifelike protocells, as well as explaining how life began. This everything first idea of life's origins also has implications for where it got started and the most likely locations for extraterrestrial life, too. All right. And that's that was all that you could read <clears throat> my only, <laughs> without a description. My, my only problem with that theory... It's cool. I've never heard that theory before, but it, it's, it's interesting. It's absolutely brand like weeks at the time of this it, recording. Weeks based old. on that theory, there here's the problem. We should have different iterations of humans everywhere in the world then because of that spontaneous geneticist or genesis theory that they're they're basically going with there. It, so you should have not just this form of human that you, me, everybody else out there, you should have humans with eight legs or you know they should have that spontaneous generation should be so random that because the molecules i mean the molecules the rna and dna sequencing that's available based on that theory is limitless i mean you could literally have skin made out of uh uh you you get my point turtle shells i mean there's no difference so it really sounds like and not to lean on a, a prevailing I believe it's a prevailing Christian concept, but this sounds like a scientific approach to intelligent design. <clears throat> Just that everything happened at once in a way that was congruent. Right. And 
he's picking up what I'm putting down as far as how I built this list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I caught a little tiny bit of that. But one thing I will say, Adam, to kind of maybe to disagree with you. Yeah, maybe you say, oh, there should be all kinds of different kinds of humans. Well, there are all different kinds of primates, including lemurs, which are also considered primates, but they're all primates, but they're all are t- tons of different kinds of life on Earth. I mean, millions of different kinds of life. So in essence, just because there aren't different kinds of humans and some with eight legs, there are so many different kinds of life. Okay, that's and fair. And we discover different <clears throat> kinds of life that we didn't know were there before. Why is there only one kind of life on Earth that has cognition? Well, that's a that's a totally different subject. You're talking about evolution, honestly. Though, right? That's more about evolution and no cognition uh, isn't cognition is awareness. I mean, that's that's right. I am therefore I, uh, I think therefore I am. That whole right. concept is unique only to humanity. No other right. It's, it's primate species or anything. It's evolution. Yeah, but in this theory, in number three, in number three, no, absolutely not. In but number like, three, that in this list. That spontaneous genesis that Ron's referring to also presumably would provide us the capability of having our cognition, our Mm self-awareness. And no, to answer your question, no, the what's the Turing test? The Turing test doesn't only work on robots. It can also work on any other species out there, but all of them are too dumb. Talking about Alan Turing? Yeah, the Turing test. Okay. Yeah. Cognition, self-awareness. That that test can work on anything. You give it to a house plan if you want to. It doesn't matter. The, it has to have self-awareness and cognition and understanding of consequences, moral consequences, not consequences of I'm afraid of a cave because a bear might be in it. I'm not going to go in that cave. That's what an animal's instincts are, not instincts, but an animal's cognition would prevent that from happening. It doesn't think if I go into that cave, I'm not going to have children. It doesn't think that far in a, into its depth, into its future. That cognition piece, why is humanity and our genetic makeup the only one on Earth that has that capability? Again, I think I think that's more of an anthropology question, but I, I guess not really. I, don't, I mean, I, don't I'm not, I didn't expect an answer. It's just oh, okay. hypothetical. Well, the reason that is, no, I, gonna, I don't know <laughs> shit. <laughs> that's, that's kind of interesting because there are, and this is definitely going to go down a bit of a rabbit hole, but yes, <laughs> there are animals that have community interact, will defend each other, will proactively stave off a uh, predator. They will, they've learned how to use tools. They've learned how to use tools and teach others of their, the clans or units, whatever, mm-hmm. to use tools. Um, animals that recognize themselves in a mirror, that recognize other people in mirrors. So we have almost every level of cognition and community and thinking and planning. So I, I'm Mm. curious to see, like, I think it's ravens or crows. I always forget, but it's one of the, they they play games with each other. They recognize each other. They recognize families outside of just their community. I think a raven is a, is a family of the crow. I believe. I think so too. So there are crows are wicked smart. Crows are one of the, I think the smartest species of birds. Dolphins, the only other, um, the only other, creature on earth be it mammal amphibian whatever is a dolphin that has been um monitored to have had characteristics that are similar to the cognition that humans portray that's the only other animal on earth it has now crows and ravens can solve intricate puzzles that's really cool but that has nothing to do with cognition i'll tell you one of the most important pieces of cognition is communication and i'm not talking a dolphin talking english I'm saying recognizing and responding and then creative thought processes to instigate new conversations or new lines of communication. If a dolphin knows that it brings a ball and it gets a treat, that isn't communication. That is uh, Pavlovian behavior. So that that original thought processes is what the cognition that I'm speaking of needs to have and nothing else has it on earth. Nothing. Have you heard about that study they did with the dolphins and uh, just exactly what you're talking about? So they train these dolphins to do tricks, you know, just like you're saying. Sure. But then I guess they also train these two dolphins. They they basically told them it's whatever command it is. Say they said go down, do a decide a trick to do together and then come up and do it. And these dolphins went down, communicated, say, hey, let's do 
the triple backflip or whatever, you know, and they both came up and did a, in unison that trick and came back down. And that's like amazing. Like they be have that communication. I'll, I'd be interested to see that. That'd be, that'd be cool. That, that would be cool, yeah. communication within species is, is certainly yeah. something that would be neat to be able to prove. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that, that's my only argument. I'm not sure if that was done by the Navy absolutely or communicate world. with each other. But again, is it rudimentary just, communication? Yeah, is one thing, yeah, yes. Rudimentary. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Rudimentary. Yes, of course. The, the, the songs that whales sing to each other for recognizing patterns of, behavior mating or aggression or whatever they need to to respond to yes they can hear that for miles because of their capabilities dolphins are the same way crows in fact communication doesn't have to be verbal so this this brings up this is a throwback ron to way back in the day i think you were still uh, whatever um the the giant flocks of birds that fly and alter patterns based on predator or environmental variables is almost impossible to define how the communication happens. They've judged it by light, like the refraction of light off of other birds' wings and and whatever. That's how the whole flock turns at once. They've done all sorts of studies on ambient sounds that the birds are hearing that nobody can really pinpoint it out. The only paper that I think is really good on it is the theory of, (laughs) ironically, quantum entanglement, that these birds are communicating on a quantum level to be able to make those instantaneous millisecond movements together as a flock, as opposed to a trickle down effect, the domino effect. If one bird moves and the rest of them move, that's not what these are doing. They're all moving Literally at exactly the, the same, same time. moment. They're, the they must be reacting to something. Well, the initial reaction, yes, but how do they communicate the direction, the, the flow, the lift, the speed, everything? How do they communicate that much well, information that do fast? You know how, like, like, um, quantum entanglement. You know, like with uh, the Navy, with the, uh, I can't believe I forgot them. You know, the Navy and the fucking... Uh, Blue Angels? Yeah, Blue Angels. You know how they fly in their patterns? And stuff the like I'm amazed you got that. You know, the Navy and the... I knew where it was going. It wasn't a str- <laughs> Look, it wasn't a huge leap from was- flocks of birds flying in formation to Navy. <laughs> right, and, and, and there was, for everybody listening, there was a hand motion that went with... Yeah, yeah, I'm, not yeah, so, like this. I'm not so, so smart. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like, you know how they, like, they fly in formation, right? So what it is is, like, you have the lead plane... Right. And then you have the other ones that are all in there and they do what's what they call refer to as flying paint. So all they're doing is they're not watching around them. They're watching a certain point in their through their window, a certain spot on the other dude's plane. Like it could be literally like a spot that that's all they're watching. And that thing moves a millisecond or like a millimeter. They follow with it, you know. And so if one plane goes boom like that. Oh, shit. Did you guys hear that? That was fast. Yes. Yeah. I heard it fly over, <laughs> <Yeah>. I think. <laughs> and they're all, they're all trained to, like, move just as quickly. like, And um, that's important for, like, also flying together as well as, like, protecting each other, too. So, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. It's interesting. That's visual animals, basic. That's, my, that's based on have, visual sights. Right. Yeah. Animals might be quicker in that kind of a thing. but And be able to see, like, smaller movements, maybe. But. They also, um, yeah, we're the best at throwing out theories that we can't answer, aren't we? (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of what we do around these. No, you're good. I just, I have also watched a documentary on the Blue Angels, and I, I just want to add that the commander of the pack of planes, when they go out and they fly, they don't fly by like GPS or anything. They fly by stuff on the ground, and they don't like. There's a standard language that pilots use to talk to each other. I don't know if you like if you've ever listened on like the tons of on the times. on the airplane you listen to air traffic control whatever it's it's super fascinating I love doing that but uh, <laughs> that's the, not a joke I'm for real the uh, the Blue Angels they don't use uh, they don't use the same language they fly together and it's like it it's all it's rehearsed and it's it's like cue words and stuff and I remember the moment where the he talks specifically about a brown building in this. I wish I could remember the documentary I watched, but he talks about this brown building and that we fly and we come up to it and I just go and brown, let's go. And that's his command to all of them to turn in a certain way. They just, they memorize it and they rehearse it. It's a, a, a performance in that way, of course, but they don't, they have made up their own language hmm. that they use a jargon, not language. They've made up their own jargon, yeah, to, yeah. to fly in that tight formation, in addition to, like you're saying, where they just like stare at just a point on the commander's plan or farther back. Mm-hmm. And Brown, let's go is what I've said in the bedroom before. 
All right, sorry. <laughs> and so anyway, <laughs> so to, to sum up, uh, not to not to belittle just, your thought, uh, that's I, funny. Uh, to sum I'm all this fascinated. up, the Blue Angels magically appeared through the Everything First theory, <laughs> <laughs> which was <laughs> yeah, that was a we went down a rabbit hole. Yeah, which, I do is, wanna, uh, you number it, three. Hang on, I do want to call Josh off for something real quick, just to make sure that you didn't do this because you picked up your phone at the ironic timing that Ron said the site was subscribed only. You didn't go check the site for its validity, did you? Because if no. this is a fake one, that would be cheating. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. No, we had uh, we had problems with the kids tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Just fussy. Whatever. So I'm just my I keep my the baby camera. I get notifications on my phone. And it just keeps going off. So oh, I'm just gotcha. kidding. Okay. That's whatever it happens. All right. Well, that was a buzzkill. No, no, never, <laughs> no. You know what? Here, here, I'm gonna fix that. My wife is a beast because I told her. I, call her beast? I said, look. If there's ever a problem and they're uh, they're not cooperating, I'll leave. I'll, I'll go home if you need help. The guys of the show, they're never going to say anything yeah, no. if I go home to be a parent. Life happens first. That's priority. And she hasn't even texted me. So she's no she's a badass and she's got it under control. Yeah. Shout out to Margaret. Kick ass. Word. Word. All right. As we touched on the grand design, let's <laughs> dig a little deeper into that grand design, shall we? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um. All right, so as we uh, touched on the last one there, everything first, maybe some grand design, maybe not, uh, yeah. and how the Blue Angels were formed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> number two, Clay. Who's yes. Clay? Clay. Clay Aiken. Clay. Damn it. <laughs> I was about to say it. Clay may have been the birthplace of life on Earth. Cornell University researchers found that clay may have served as the first breeding ground for the complex biochemicals Gross. that make life possible. A finding that may reverberate with anyone familiar with the biblical creation story. Mind you, I read seven or six or seven different articles on clay and only found one article that tried to put this related to the biblical creationism. All right. And I will share after I read it what the website was. <laughs> I think uh, clay <laughs> You can really probably does. take a, a guess. Okay. All right. We propose that in early geological history, clay hyd hydrogel provided a confinement function for biomolecules and biochemical reactions, said Dan Luo, professor of biological, biological and environmental engineering and a member of... Okay, blah, blah, blah. The clay absorbs liquid like a sponge and acts as the perfect place for chemicals to react with one another to form proteins, DNA, and eventually living cells. According to the Old Testament, God made the first man, Adam, from earth or clay. Adam comes from the Hebrew word Adama, which means earth. The Quaron, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing Quran. it. Quaron. Quaron. No. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to say, uh, let's please edit that out, but absolutely not. I will just be stupid uh, for the entertainment uh, of millions. That was awesome. Uh, so the Quaron... God, what a moron. The Quran. Why, why isn't it just spelled K-O-R-A-N? God dang it. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> You're such an American. Uh, oh, just just to help me say it correctly, that's all. Well, they all just speak American. Uh, Greek mythology <laughs> and other <laughs> creation stories also say God molded man from clay. That was from FoxNews.com. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So, so your name means Earth? Uh, I guess so. I mean, yes, it in, does. In old Hebrew. <laughs> oh. In the in the Quran? So in the qu <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So that, it's, you're it's, saying that Oh, I'm sorry, Josh, go ahead. I was I think we're probably gonna ask the same question. So is is the boiled down version of this that as a, just at a bacteria level, clay became that breeding ground because it trapped the heat Gosh. and the and the waste product, et cetera? Yeah, there, th this particular story didn't dig as deep into the um, science of it as it did into the creationism of it. So I thought the combination there seemed interesting. Cool. I mean, it, it was a it, good spot for this on the list. Clay I mean, makes sense. It I does. Mean. It makes a lot of sense. And anytime you've got a scientific theory that overlaps with a religious theory, it's always wildly fascinating when that happens. Yeah. You know, like two things. One... I couldn't help listening to that. If you go back and listen to that, listeners, if you go back and listen to it, every time he says clay, I think of Clay Aiken, and it's really gross. Just saying. <laughs> and secondly, this is just for us in the room. Doesn't his mic look like a chameleon? Sorry. 
Every time I look over at him, it looks like there's a chameleon oh. with the tail. And, I got oh, it does kind of look like a yeah. chameleon. Yeah. Sorry. Come, Sorry. come, 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 come. All right. Um, so two things. The clay, the life formation inside clay would make sense because it's <laughs> it's uh, it's such an insulator by itself. I mean, that's it, it can trap heat. It can prevent freezing. It can. It, I mean, there's there's a thousand things that could make clay a great breeding ground for uh, any kind of cellular activity. Um, but <laughs> all I could think when you were talking about clay was clay and this Aiken. is no uh, oh. clay Aiken initially. Yes. Sorry. But the uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it was Clash of the Titans. The old movie oh, from I like love, the seventies, love that movie. Where the gods, about, it was like early eighties, the yeah. gods from the like Zeus and all of the gods would yes. literally make the humans in their little like diorama, yes, out of clay, and they would mm. place them in their little places, and absolutely, poof, yeah, there is the there person. they are in the real life, yeah. So yeah. you've got three and four of your list wrapped up clay and spontaneous Genesis or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, gotcha. Yes. So yeah, that was number two. We drug out clay as far as we could, I think. Clay. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. I felt good about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Into it. Everybody ready for number one? I'm sure clay. you could probably yeah. anybody want to take a guess. Wait a minute. What, wasn't one? that one number three? No, that was number two. Did I mess up the numbers again? What no, was you're, three? You're good. No, Did I just yeah. mess it up? No. Uh, three was everything first. The Blue Angel oh, Theory. Oh, so two and three. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Number one. <clears throat> Anybody want to take a guess? Flat Earth. This is religion. Oh. <laughs> this is uh, pure, got, pure deity. I say it's either going to be the traditional creation myth or the Big Bang Theory that led to the creation yeah. of everything. Adam and Eve. Number one, it's just a good old-fashioned Adam and Eve. You don't need to attend church to know the basic story of Adam and Eve. The Jewish and Christian creation story is ubiquitous. Ubiquitous. (laughs) Ubiquitous. God. In the beginning, God has a creative frenzy culminating in Adam. Adam gets lonely. Did you get lonely, Adam? I did. (laughs) So God makes Adam a partner. Andrea. No, Eve. (laughs) Out of one of his ribs... Everything is great until a talking snake comes along and tells Eve to eat an apple, even though God specifically said not to. She does then she does then makes Adam do it. Adam, you have no woman. willpower. Oh, Typical yeah. woman. Yeah. They, they realize they Bitch. are naked and add some strategically placed leaves that will be very convenient to blushing artists throughout history who don't want to show genitals. God figures out what they did, and they get in trouble, thrown out of the Garden of Eden. They have to live in the crappy regular world with all the commoners, and we've all been punished for what they did since. (laughs) Is this the one you made up? Totally. (laughs) There are endless creationist theories from different religions of the past and present, so be on the lookout for a future Twisted Ten listing. My favorites. Oh, cool. I like that teaser. So I'm guessing you don't buy into that one? The way you read it was completely like... (laughs) Sourced sourced from Fox News. I'm just reading the words. (laughs) The way you read it was just like, and this bullshit happened over here. I mean, you didn't read it like unbiased in any way. It was like completely... I was just trying to make it interesting yeah that makes sense sense. everyone had heard the story a hundred thousand times if we had all come from adam and eve all right so let's just assume for a minute that this is the truth um we also have to assume that there are millions of murdered um birth defected babies out there all right so incest incest is going to lead and granted it's not as high as a lot of people say it is but an incest leading to a birth defect uh, is like 8% or something like that, a per- percent chance of a baby, or maybe it's mm-hmm. even lower than that. Maybe it's like 3% chance of a, a birth defect from incestual sex. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, let's just take 3%. If you started with two and then the... Um, uh, Remember, they only had two sons, so... They yeah. had to be motherfuckers, just so you know. <laughs> That's just a good say, point. Hey, they mind you, Cain and, and Abel. mind you, all Actually, this. one of them killed the other hey, one. Cain so. and Abel, hey, is that and right? You don't get 4.6 billion years to do all this. Mind you, you only get 10,000 years oh, no. to make all this happen. <laughs> no, no, no. That was actually, I think that was Neil deGrasse Tyson who went through that, that iterative, and he even brought this up. So this isn't my original thought. I want to point that out. But uh, if you started with two, and then to get to 7 billion people where we are right now, you would have enough time, even in the six thousand year model. Oh, interesting! So you would have enough well, time. Look at me, not attrition rate. But that takes into effect there are no birth defects from incestual sex. So you have no birth defects, and you have 
lots of motherfuckers and cases like that. Does but that, there is enough time. Well, it to happened do it. again Dude. too with Noah's Ark. Sorry. <laughs> also had point. sons. Right, only yeah, two sons. Sons. Well, they brought one girl, didn't they? I thought. Yeah, one of them had a wife. According to the movie. One of them had a wife. Well, they had rock magic rock people. And she said it was yeah, she yeah. gave it movie. one star worst boat ride ever. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Did did honest question, did and you said that was Neil deGrasse. I think. Tigan's look, I tape. might be wrong on my okay. my citation of a scientist, but I think it was Neil deGrasse. Tigan, so the yeah. question I have is that it it always I found it fascinating that in um, Genesis in the Old Testament, and it may have carried through to other books. I don't know, but people lived eight to nine hundred years old. We we were effectively like an immortal people that for punish we were punished and given our what we now register as our mortal, you know natural lifespan of 25 to 100 years. So it was like a punishment. It didn't take into it, consideration it, any of this. It was like the first thousand no. years of just... I think he did it based like on the 30-year lifespan. <laughs> yeah. I think he'd based one human 30-year lifespan because for the most part, most of human history has been that way. Say, yeah, we're pretty 30 to 40 is the max you're pretty much going to live. Um, spread out over that amount of time having two babies with each couple. So that formula, yeah, it, it would end up with more more than 7 billion like we've got now. Well, also keep in mind too, like just in our lifetime, the population of the earth has doubled just in our lifetime. Yeah, we're on a 100% unsustainable Wait a minute. exponential doubled? growth curve. Mm-hmm. When I was born, it wasn't 3 billion or 3.5 billion. Google that, Google that shit. Was it really? Google that shit. Well, plus to, okay, I'll Google that shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's your theory. <laughs> just like Adam saying. Nah. Just putting shit out there and then making us try and do the research to disprove it. It's like no, no, it's, it's like every that's like Adam's uh, debates right there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, you figure it out. It's your theory. <laughs> Let's um, maybe we bench that for the after show. What's this? Oh, I mean, I already got it right now. Oh, so I just picked a random year, nineteen eighty. So all right, nineteen eighty, the population of the world was four point four billion. Yeah, damn, that's pretty close to doubling. Holy shit, that's nuts. Yeah, I didn't know yeah, that. This is another problem. <laughs> See, well. Fuckers put on some condoms. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> almost two billion of them alone is in India, or is it China? China, Both but China? India has over a billion as well now. That's insane. Yeah, and every one of them learn how to fucking call my phone at nine o'clock at night, telling me that they're the IRS. Yeah. So it's Adam's turn now. Sorry. Racism. Sorry. <laughs> Man, All that right. was a good list. No, that was, okay. that was so, good. I like So that. there was a twist. Oh, oh was a twist. yes. The twist is one of them is fake. Ooh. I'm going with the chemo. Well, can I say the list first? Oh. Damn. Damn. Before, we go taking, before we go taking our <laughs> shitty guesses. Wow. All right. That means so I got it right. <laughs> number one is deep sea vents. Number two, electric spark. Oh, shit. No, no, do that the other way. Number 10 was deep sea fence. <laughs> Number nine was electric spark. Number eight was magma chemosynthesis. Number seven, panspermia. <laughs> Number six, raelians. Number five, alien garbage theory. Number four, purines and pyrimidines. I don't know. After hearing this again, Number- I might change my answer. <laughs> Number three, everything first. Number two, Clay Aiken and number one, Adam and Eve. I don't know, fellas. What do you think? I'm I think going with. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think it's. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me. Pause for dramatic effect. It's nice. Oh, I see. No, it's heartburn burps. It's oh. the worst. Um, being a grown up is wonderful. <laughs> um, number. I. Number four. Pure. Which, which pure. The one with oh uh, the pure the which what the hell was it purines and pyrimidines yep okay that's Josh's guess it just came out this month as of recording right that's used that uh, the no one the said? one that came out this month was everything first but the purines and pyrimidines was in the last couple of years I'm gonna go with uh, alien garbage theory for 400 <laughs> okay <laughs> that's a, that's almost what I changed my answer to I'm gonna stick with my original the uh, vent keto acidosis it was. <laughs> Magma chemosynthesis. Chemosynthesis. Okay, so here's the story on the made-up one. You are right. That is the made-up one, the magma chemosynthesis. Here's the funny part. I first theorized in my head I was going to try and make up something that sounded really like it could be something real. So I made something up in my head. And what I made up... Lo and behold, was already a theory that I put on the list. <laughs> the deep sea vents. So, you, so I thought, how can I just take that and make it like about oh, the land? Awesome. Like, like, how can I just take that deep sea vent theory and kind of put it up on land out of the sea? 
So that's where I came up with magma chemosynthesis. Now, the funny part is I purposely avoided the word chemosynthesis in, in my description of deep sea vents. That is actually what's happening down there. That heat, you know, is chemosynthesis. Oh, cool. I knew that word from years ago watching something about deep sea vents and all that stuff. Not about the creation of life on Earth. It was just some other kind of documentary I was watching. I was probably just watching something about Blue Planet or some shit like that. So that's where I came up with the whole magma chemosynthesis Huh. concept but i originally thought about it like the deep sea vents and i said oh shit that's already actually a theory well never mind <laughs> you so, you, dude, you so i had to make well. up so, i had to make yeah, up something i don't know well. you you picked it out right away you're like that's bullshit right there <laughs> sorry <laughs> and i thought damn it i didn't sell this good enough then no I, no you did then you i thought me. as i got through the list i thought i don't know some of these sound kind of out there like you know the alien garbage theory i thought someone's probably kind of that adam and eve bullshit <laughs> that adam and eve bullshit but anyway uh that was a that was a lot of fun guys Dude, that was an awesome list. That, was a good list that was fucking awesome yes good time <laughs> so good time. i have another topic to discuss is this like an after show thing i say we put it to the after show yeah, that sounds yeah. very after yeah, yeah. show worthy yeah. Yeah. even if it is list related no ron that was <laughs> um you had me going. I, I almost switched to garbage theory. Almost. Just because it sounded garbage, because they were just like photosynthesis and paradigms, and then there's garbage theory, <laughs> and then the rest was like and chemo, rah, 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 science-y stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Big yeah. science works, yes. I, and I tried to form the list like super science-y, alien stuff, couple newer theories, and then mushed it into religion. You know how to make us like all I, of us rock hard. I actually like tried <laughs> to was, like... He knew his audience. I like tried to organize that list in like a certain way so it wasn't obscure in and fact, random. Ron, so Ron's note says, flowed. gonna lose Adam here, gonna lose Tack here, yeah. and Josh is gonna be stoned and doesn't care here. No, I'm kidding about the being stoned part. <laughs> and of course, I always challenge myself with my reading abilities in all these damn shows I do. <laughs> Sorry good. about the Quran part there. <laughs> Anybody who, <laughs> <laughs> what did I call it? Uh, the Quarren? The Quarren. <laughs> look, look, it does, phonetically spelled, it does look like Quarren. So. Have to, all I have to say is, God damn, I messed that up. <laughs> oh, oh, see what I did there? But oh. Is that a plug bell? Wow. No. No, that was a pun bell. Do we have a different one for bad puns? <laughs> womp, womp, womp. Well, there you I go. think you hold it sideways, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. You guys want to get out of here? Yeah. Can I right. can I do a quick plug? Of course. Well, they know we're not getting out of here. We talked about the after show. <laughs> you you well, guys want to get out of here to do the after show here in here the, the same show. place? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, plug. Plug away. All right. So uh, I have a podcast. It's called A Very Brady Podcast. Jimmy Klein and I oh, host the show. God. We, we talk kidding. a lot of shit. I'm just kidding. It's a good show. We give them a hard time about it. Do you it. listen yeah, to it? Love. Are yeah, you absolutely. a subscriber? Wow. Look at you, buddy. I, I subscribed. I subscribed day one. Well, I guess maybe not day one, but the day you told us about it. So like day eight. <laughs> gotcha. So basically, it's a Brady Bunch rewatch podcast where season one is a little bit different than season two. But basically, um, now we're doing the show as Jimmy Klein and I. We watch the episode. We completely break the episode down, tear it apart. We come up with some fun Brady Bunch conspiracies. Uh, Ron here was on episode one. We started the conspiracy theory thing. and Oh, yeah. I, I give you, if, if you we have to go listen to episode one, I give you the reason political and like geopolitical reasons of why that show even exists to begin with. I will not tell That's you what That's just it was. one of you the many. Have, yes, you you read politics one. into the Brady Bunch? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And it he fits. Did, and does it not fit magically or what? Yeah, man. It's all good. It fits. All of the conspiracy yeah. theories yeah, we've but, come up with fit. Yeah, but if you play uh, Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas while listening to Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon, it also fits, but it doesn't go together. Yes, it does. No. Ooh, what time in that AC just It's called up. Pareidolia. But anyway, <laughs> okay. um, so check it out. It's on, you know, anywhere this podcast is. That is too. A very pretty podcast. Sweet. Is it on Spotify? I just started yeah. using Spotify as my, because Google Play Music, I guess, is going to go bye-bye. It's I've not. No it's getting folded into YouTube Music. So it's not going away. They're just uh, merging okay. the two services. Gotcha. So now YouTube Music will give you access to both regular all of your audio and stuff your normal youtube ah, cool. music that we're used to but then also we'll have to figure out if we can host there too we'll have to go through our episodes well we're gonna have youtube channel anyway but if we can throw up an rss feed for youtube <laughs> for, anyway well that's behind the scenes <laughs> shit. we'll figure that out later um all right cool you guys got yeah. anything else to plug nope no nope. no nope. nope. just the discord server again like if you're listening if you're still here I mean, seriously just come show up come say hey thank you yeah it um we're really, we want to build a community with you guys. We want you guys to show up, talk to us about the show, tell us what you think, and just hang out. 
Uh, we have we have talked about it. Facebook is kind of um, it's changed the past few years, and it's a oh, yeah. sort of um, cold, sort of indifferent. It feels very much like a business front page, and the whole community functions that used to be part of groups now they got split off into something else, and it's just paying that anyway. So we just we're trying to bring people into Discord to come hang out with us, get some behind the scenes on the show, and stuff. Yeah, there's so, so much just, more capability in Discord, and it's yeah. more direct. Yeah, you aren't flooded it's us. with bullshit. You get us, yeah. yeah. And we're like, we're there. We're hanging out in Discord. So we just, we want to chat with you guys. So just come say, hey, just twisted10.com. And there's a big old invite button right on the side. So just. For those of you who don't know what Discord is, it's just a community forum, basically. So they think of it as a forum, like the old school days of forums, just with a lot more features. Um, there's rankings in there. So you participate and conversate with folks inside that, that location. It'll help. Uh, our Patreon folks will get a special group that they're a member of so they can have, you know, uh, exclusive offers to them. Um, it's, it's evolving for us as well. So be patient with us, but I think that's our landing page for the next foreseeable future. Yeah. It's going to be cool. Pretty very, very cool. 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 All right, fellas. Ready, ready to go do the after show? Take a break and then talk some shit. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, fellas. Thank you so much, Ron. Awesome list. Um, Dang you it. knocked it out of the fucking park, dude. Good good list. A very entertaining list. That's that's the whole point of us being here. So good, good on you. Um, on behalf of the Twisted Ten, I'm Adam. I'm Josh. I'm Ron. And to our very, very special <laughs> welcomed back Stop. permanent spot in the studio. Always going to be here. Tag man, take I'll be here when I can. But <laughs> Tech. All right. Well, All we're right, happy guys. to have you back at the show. Hell yeah. Guys. All right. Catch you guys next week. Hey, you guys. Oh, my neck. A very Brady podcast. Join host Tack Van Sickle and his guest each week as they hilariously dissect the iconic TV show, The Brady Bunch, one episode at a time. He was so creepy, though. That guy was like, I he's like, I guarantee you, if they could have really done the show the way they want to do it, like he was going to have a cup to the door listening in that night. <laughs> a look back at a simpler time where everything was groovy. <laughs> so her kids almost wrecked their marriage. Her employee shames her and she like thanks both of them. It's awesome. <laughs> So grab your potato sack and head out to the backyard for some fun. She's in her own room. Like, what did we like, tell what? her about sleeping? <laughs> like they went and got the entire family for dad to pick her up and put her in her bed two feet away from the desk. And obviously before they did that, they also said, family, go get your bathrobes. Everyone needs to be in a bathroom. A Very Brady Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and anywhere podcasts are available. They have some compromising pictures of Alice that they could have used uh, to blackmail her and keep her there. Um, I've seen those pictures, and Alice is hotter than you think. I'm going to just put that out there and say it. Uh, that blue dress doesn't do justice? Uh, no, it does. For, for me, that blue dress does everything. Far out! You're a bad man, Tack. You're a bad human. There's a lot of weird in this show.